What's up, everyone? My name is Stephen Michaels. I am joined by Phil Robinson. This is the greatest show you have ever heard in your life. This is the Raiders Weekly, Episode 2, and we are going to preview the first game of the 2022 season, the Raiders versus the Chargers. This game will be in L.A. What's going on, Phil? It is finally time. The wait is over. It's week one, and I am ecstatic. We actually got some football tonight, and that's even better. But let's let's get into this matchup because, you know, I've heard so much about what the Chargers are going to do, how good the Chargers are, how they look like paper champs are going to win the division and all this bullshit. And I got to tell you, I'm not impressed. Well, let me tell you, every single year, it feels like we hear this about the Chargers, right? That they're going to be the, the the big team. The, you know, this is the year, the Super Bowl. There's something with the Chargers. This team is cursed. No matter what, how good they do throughout the regular season, they always manage to mess the thing up at the end. I mean, this team is literally cursed. I remember a couple of years ago when they were about to beat the Raiders and all they needed is, a, I think it was an extra point or an easy field goal, and they botched the snap. I mean, yeah. that's just typical Chargers. They are just, they're that team. Snake, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And remember, this is week one. So when we talk about this game, I think this is very important for everyone to know. This is week one. A lot of weird stuff happens in week one. You know, there's a lot of overreactions after week one. You know, a good team may lose, and everyone thinks, oh, this team's going to suck for the rest of the season. It's week one. Uh, The Raiders, remember, going into this game, they haven't played any of their starters. They haven't played Derek Carr, you know, Devontae Adams, Max Crosby, Chandler Jones, uh, Denzel Perryman, all the big-name guys, all the captains, basically. They have not played any of these guys. So this is going to be the first time in live action playing against another team in week one. You can't, you can't like duplicate this, even in those scrimmages or anything like this. This is week one. We are here, Phil. This is the march to the Super Bowl right here. This is the year, right? Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. All right. I, I hope I hope next year's the year because it seems that whenever you host the Super Bowl these days, you get it. That means you're winning. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? But I would like them to year. go back to back. Fuck it. I yeah, want to see them go to back, back to back. Yeah, back to back, back to back. But that, that's uh, what we need. But what I like, but no, and that, and that's real. And this, I like, I like everything about this year. I like the team. I like you. I'm a little bigger on the on the coaching staff than you are. And that's all right. Uh, I like, I like the players. Uh, it, it has a different feel to me. It feels like it should. When I look at what Josh McDaniels has done with this coaching staff and what the coaching staff has done with these players and what these players have put on film and on the field, it just feels different to me. It feels like it's supposed to, it looks like football being played the way football is supposed to be played. Yeah, my whole issue, it's not really an issue, is it's more of a uh, an unknown. I don't know how Josh McDaniels is going to do. The last time we seen him coaching was in Denver, and obviously that didn't go very well. So nobody really knows. I mean, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he is ready to be a head coach and everything goes smoothly. Derek Carr can, you know, adjust the system pretty easily, which I don't think that will be a big problem, really, because he McDaniels does a lot of things Gruden did anyways, getting the ball out of your hands fast, stuff like that. So that's I think he'll be fine. But, I mean, this is Josh McDaniels' second chance at being a head coach. He failed the first time. This is his second time. He has to be successful now. And the only thing that worries me is, as you know, all of these Patriot uh, coordinators, they have all sucked. Everywhere they went, they have sucked. So I'm hoping Josh McDaniels is the, is the guy that can break free from that. But also, the only thing that gives me, you know, encourages me is that 
Remember, without Josh McDaniels, Bill Belichick doesn't have those Super Bowl ranks. No. McDaniels was there for six of those Super Bowl ranks. So hopefully, who knows, maybe, just maybe, Josh McDaniels just needed to be in the right spot, the right time, and that time is now. So let's get right into it, Phil. Here we go. Week one. Let's get it. Let's get right into it. Running game. All right, running game. So the Raiders are going to have to go into this game, and they're going to have to remember that it's not going to be just Josh Jacobs anymore. It's going to be a running back by committee. They have to get a running game going. The Raiders must get a running game going. They have to. This is going to be a big test for the Raiders' offensive line. Now, if there's one thing. Oh, go ahead. Go I ahead. was going to say so. That now that's the running game, and and as we're talking about this committee, and I and I hate to interrupt your thought, but this is this is important. When you look at the way they structured the depth chart, you have Jacobs, you got Bolden, you have Abdullah, then you have White and Brown. Did they structure this in terms of their pass protection abilities, and maybe maybe they have Amir Abdullah penciled in as the James White role? Getting the uh, getting the screens, being the little the little back that can get out here and do a lot of everything. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if this staff actually puts a lot of stock into their their running back depth chart. To be honest, you know what I mean. Like uh, Abdullah and Bolden, or, or especially Abdullah, I think is more of a guy that's going to be like a Jalen Rashard type. You know what I mean? A, a third down type guy. Brandon Bolden can block. He can do pretty much everything. And then you have Josh Jacobs. And don't forget about Zamir White. You know what I mean? This guy, I know he's not, he's probably not going to get a ton of carries, but with the carries he gets, if that guy starts getting big yards and heart and runs hard and gets big chunks, he's going to get more and more carries. So that's, what I'm focusing on, that's what, that's what I'm looking at right there is can these guys, you know, make it work with a running back by committee? You know, because Josh Jacobs is used to being that bell cow running back, a guy who gets the ball, who's just, you know, he's the guy. He's the number one guy. And now it's not going to be like that. Is that going to hurt the Raiders? You know, taking Jacobs off the field to put someone else in, is that going to be a good thing or a bad thing? In the past, what happens is it usually fuels his competitive drive and makes him go out and work that much harder and be mo that much more effective. And I truly do hope that that's what happens with this. I know we we could we know that everybody's going to say the right things in the media and in front of the camera, but that's got to be burnt chapping his ass. I mean, he didn't get his fifth year option. He, they brought in four, seven million running backs to, and then told him he was splitting carries with all of them. So I know that's I know that's got to be sticks just leaving us bad taste in his mouth. But it could also be that thing to motivate him to make sure that those guys stay on the bench because he's tearing shit up. Yeah, I mean, and he has to. And, and there, there's no doubt about it, by the way, that he's not. I mean, they didn't pick up his 50 year option. I don't care what you say as a player to the media. You're pissed off. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't pick up his fifth-year option. So, obviously, he's going to come into this season with a chip on his shoulder, and hopefully that's, that's a good thing for Josh Jacobs. Because if I was Dave Ziegler, I would not have picked up Josh Jacobs' fifth-year option either. No. You know, he, he, had, he has way too many injuries in the past, and – and that, and now, they were going to bump him up to ten million, eight million, somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah, million. Yeah. I was like, that, that's that. Yeah, you don't do that. I, if John Gruden was still the coach, he they probably would have picked up his option. But you know, it's stupid. It's he's been injured too much, and I really think Josh Jacobs has to prove that he can be healthy all season long, and. You know, be consistent. He's another guy. You know, he'll have a really good game and then just not be that good the next game. And that's why I, I kind of like these multiple running backs the Raiders are trying to incorporate. But the 
weird thing is, like I said about week one, is we don't know what this offense is really, truly going to look like. We really don't know. Nobody knows. And the good news about that is the Chargers don't know what's coming at them. They have no idea what to expect. The only thing they know is, oh, shit, they got Devontae Adams over there. But remember, the Raiders also have Darren Waller. They have Hunter Renfro. They have Matt Collins. They have all of these running backs. They got a, They are loaded on offense as long as that offensive line can keep up. That's the only thing that concerns me about this game. That's yeah. really pretty much it. And that's why I asked the question that I asked about the running backs, because it seemed to me obvious that it would that they were going to have that they're going to have a lot of chipping. They're going to give they're going to give the right side of that line as much help as they possibly can. Yeah, and don't and don't forget the fullback will be heavily involved in this game, I believe, you know, helping out. Plus, you put Foster over there, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, either side, you might either we're probably going to do a lot of double tight end sets. So then you have, because remember the chargers, they're loaded, you know, their, their defense, the line is no joke. We can't just pretend that this team did not, you know, go, they got better in this off season. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they got yeah. some, they, you, I mean, you got Quill Mack and you got Bosa out there. You know what I mean? And- you got Kyle, you got, linebacker you got Kyle Van Noy I mean they got a they got a lot of good players that are gonna get after this offensive line and perhaps you know stop the run so we'll see how that all transpires but they're gonna need guys this offensive line are gonna need more help I believe you know for, against Joey Bosa and Cleo Mack now, when John Gruden was with the Raiders, if you remember, when they played Chicago the first time, he had an excellent game plan to defend against Quill Mack. And they Attack basically him. put him at – Yeah, they, they, they put Attack him at bay. Him. Yeah, they went right at him. They just – they pretty much just, you know, they dominated him in that game. And that's what – but now you got Bosa and Mack. You know, and we're going in there with a right tackle who, you know, let's be honest here. We're not, you know, we don't really know much how this guy's going to do. Bruh. I don't think. Bruh. I don't, I don't know if the Raiders even know. Bruh. I don't know if the. Come on. What? Come on. What? What? Come on. What? So you're over here. You're over here talking. Yeah, we got both. They got both. So they got Mac. Listen, we got a, we have Colton Miller on the left side. Whoever's rushing from the left side, I'm not worried about. So the oh, Cole I'm not Miller's, not- Cole Miller's going to hold it down. You can scheme like you said. You can scheme for one side of the line, and that hap- and that happens to be the strong side of the line. So you already have a guy there that that's helping out that can chip on his way out to a pass route. You already have a running back who's there for run support to chip again and then slide out into the flat. And have openings. The screen game can completely immobilize that that side of that side's pass rush. Because if he wants to get up the field and you keep popping that screen right behind him, eventually he's going to stop rushing or at least start playing honest and help out your line. There are so many different things that they can do that because they have Colton Miller on the other side who is rocks L- as solid as they come and should be a pro bowler this year. If he's not a pro bowler this year, I'm going to be really fucking disappointed, to be honest with you. Well, remember, though, I mean, it's just not about one side. You got They're going to work their, their right side all the way until to the middle. You know what I mean? So they're, they're going to they're gonna test guys like, you know, they, they got the guards for the Raiders. They, they're going to do stunts. They're going to blitz up the middle. They're going to try things on the outside. The Chargers are going to try all of these things. They're going to test the Raiders' offensive line heavily in this game, in my opinion. And you know what stops that? What stops that? Smashing them in the mouth. The Matt too, smashing (laughs) them, going double tight and going straight at them or spreading them out. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I mean, we don't know because obviously we have not got to see this offense yet. 
But if I had to bet, I would guess that the Raiders are going to use a, a lot of two tight end sets. Derek Carr might be on our center a lot, just so we can have the fullback there too, to, you know, the block. And every once in a while, every, you know, every other play or whatever, you spread them all out. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then you just, you pick them apart. Don't forget, you know, everyone talks about Devontae Adams, and I'm sure he'll do great. But the Raiders have Hunter Renfro, who is the most underrated wide receiver in the National Football League by Player. far. I mean, this dude, I mean, he's Hunter Renfro. Pound you gotta for put pound. some respect on that name. You know pound what I mean? That's pound. Hunter Renfro. Hunter he's gonna motherfucking break Renfro. He's going to break these dudes' legs. Now, like I said, the Chargers, they have J.C. Jackson. We'll see what happens with him, right? We don't know if he's going to play. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. But even if he does, who cares? Devontae Adams, right? Run yeah. Up against Devontae Adams, let's see what happens. But like I said, the Chargers did get better in the offseason. They have Asante Samuel Jr., uh, you know, Bryce Callahan, Bryce Callahan. Yep. Mike, Derwin Michael Davis. James, Michael Davis, yeah. Nasir Durin Adderley. Duran James is the one I'm a little worried about. I'm, Are you? To be honest. Yeah. Only because when the car is going to throw these slants, I don't want, you know, something bad. I've seen Derek Carr make some stupid plays where he thinks he can throw over the guy's head or something. And for example, if you go back to last season, you look at the Giants game. Uh, I believe it was the linebackers who did it to him that, in that game. He thought he could just throw it over their head. They jump up, boom, pick them off. You know what I mean? Just he just he's eyeing that white uh, or Darren Waller at the time, and he just thinks he can make that throw. And boom, he's got to watch out for Darren James. That's all I'm saying. Like you got to watch out for that guy. You got to know where he is on the field every single play because that guy is good. He is good. The, this Chargers team. Now, like I said, the Chargers, they always end up choking all the time. That's why I think Raider fans call them chokers, right? But they always end up shooting themselves in their own foot. But they are loaded with talent. But let's not get things twisted here. The Raiders are loaded with talent, too. You know what I mean? Especially on offense. Now, we know this offense, even though the Chargers are loaded on defense, this offense should be able to move the ball on this team, right? Yes. Now, the what I want to know is, I mean, this is, the to me, a huge question mark. How will the Raiders' defense be against the Chargers' offense? That is going to be a big question mark, in my opinion. Now, yes, you got Chandler Jones and Max Crosby. We all know that. But the DTs? To the secondary, I mean, how are they going to be able to match up? How will they match up? It's a brand new scheme. Remember, they're not, you know, this is a, we're not in the 4-3 Gus Bradley scheme anymore. We are in a different scheme. Do these players have this scheme down? Like, there's a lot of unknowns heading into week one for the Raiders. I, for people. one, am incredibly encouraged. I cannot wait to see what Patrick Graham is going to do with this defense. I've already, we've seen, I mean, glimpses. I might even call it a bit or a bit or a piece. We've seen glimpses of just what he's going to do with with Abram. How how his pre a little bit of how he views pressure situations. Right when you're used to seeing te the team lay off, he's coming up. <clears throat> the 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 disguises. I, I I'm really really looking forward to seeing what it is that he comes up with, because I I truly do believe that the collection of talent that they have is vastly underrated, and there's a lot of people who are going to be pleasantly surprised by the effort they put together. Yeah, I mean. I, I want to see the scheme. I want to see, you know, the full – We you don't see it really in preseason. They don't show that much. I want to see, you know, their stunts. They're, you, the Raiders are going to run a lot of, you know, double stunts and stuff like that with their linebackers. And they're going to use, obviously, Jonathan Abram in that. Also, Jonathan Abram is going to be asked in 
I mean, it's going to happen. He's going to be asked to cover at certain points in this game because the Chargers are going to throw the ball at times when maybe the Raiders aren't expecting them to throw the ball. So hopefully he, he got better in that uh, area because, you know, he was not that great. Another guy who the Raiders did not pick up his fifth-year option. Hopefully he's better in that area. And then, like I said, we got a new starting cornerback in Rock Yassin. Hopefully he is good. He is as good as ever. This guy can go out there and make a big difference. And you got Anthony Everett over there. So it's going to be interesting to see this defense. Everett's now, not over- starting. Well, I'm just saying he's over there. He, he's there. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, I'm just naming the secondary. So, uh, and then, of course, obviously, you got Trayvon Morig, who's going to be the, the safety. Well, I'm expecting him, by the way, to have a this should be his year where he has a, you know, he steps it up and really becomes that free safety the Raiders envision him to be. I think this is going to be a, a pretty good year for him. I really do. It's funny that you say that because I, I said the same thing in an article that I wrote for uh, the Raider Ramble. I lay, listed three breakout players. Mine were uh, Nate Hobbs, Trayvon Morig, and Divine Diablo. Yeah, I just think, you know, last year, obviously, a rookie. You know what I mean? Now he had like a full year. You got to remember, when you get drafted and then you get thrown right in there, there's a lot that goes into that. You're adjusting to the speed of the game. Now he know, he's adjusted. He knows all this. He's been learning this whole new system. And luckily, you know, he was he wasn't in Gus Bradley's scheme uh scheme for you know five years or whatever. It was one year, now he's in this scheme where I think he's gonna be better. He's gonna have better chances to make plays like interceptions. And that's where uh I think we need to go to now is how can the Raiders win this game? That's gonna be a big point, I think, right there is turnovers. The Raiders got to create turnovers in this game against the Chargers. They must force turnovers. They were terrible at doing it last season. Against the Chargers, I think that's what this game is going to come down to. Who turns the ball over more and who shoots themselves in their foot more? Absolutely. And what I like best is that they find they have ball hawks and more importantly, the the defense is not going to uh, require them to be ungodly reactional freaks. And what I mean by that is in Gus Bradley's system, cover three system, I give them give them seven yards every play and then try to run with the run with them after that. You you if you don't have Earl Thomas back there, you don't have a guy who's capable of of making plays, uh, for lack of a better term, because He's got to he's got to react to what it is that he's seeing while still having responsibilities co- going across the other side of the field. Now he's going to get put in positions to where he can where it, basically it'll be it'll be set up throws where he'll, they'll show the offense one thing and then they'll make the check and he'll jump a route and he'll end up right in the right in the passing lane without the quarterback ever having ever known he was there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I see the Chargers, too, in this game. Uh, you mentioned the screen game. I see them testing the Raiders out in a screen game early. Yes. I think they're, they're, they're going to try to run the ball first, I believe, and then try to screens and see how good the Raiders are, you know, the linebackers are, and everyone pretty much, in the screen game to see, you know, just to test them. Because if they start having big success with Austin Eckler and, you know, in a screen game, the Raiders are in for a long day. But that's why I think turnovers will be huge. Nate Hobbs has looked phenomenal throughout training camp. Uh, Hopefully that carries over. And this guy is a great cornerback. Let's hope. Because we really don't know. Like I said, we don't really know. So, we're going to find out in this game, and it's time. I think it's the Raiders' time. I think this game, even though it's week one, and there's a lot of overreacting for week one, 
this game, I think, could set the tone for the Raiders' season. Like, the Chargers could lose this game and I think still be fine throughout the season. You know, they, they have a returning head coach. The Raiders have a new head coach, a new scheme. The players are buying in. I think if they win this game, it will give them so much confidence going forward in week two, three, four, throughout the whole season. If they can go out there and smash the Chargers in the face and win this game. Uh, I couldn't have said it any better. I expect a good game. I don't think that the Chargers are going to be pushovers by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I don't. I don't. I let's say. Let me approach this a better way. I sincerely hope that their co- head coach continues coaching with the philosophy that he is in, he's shown thus far of being willing to be daring, a risk taker, and and a bad decision maker. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, and I hope that he continues that. I he continues that and and does not change. I agree. I agree. I, and I think uh, Brandon Staley is a a weirdo as well. <laughs> uh, it, he, it, it, the, there's there were a lot of questionable decisions, but you know, hey, you live. He's, an, an, he, he's an analytics guy. Which just pisses me off. Is you know what? You're a football coach. You go out there. Don't worry about the analytics. Go out there, right, and watch what's going on. If you're having success running the football, keep running the football. If you're yeah. having success throwing to one player, let's say I don't know, Keelan Allen is on fire. Okay, <laughs> keep throwing to Keelan Allen. I mean, you don't need analytics. You need two eyeballs. That's yeah. all you need. That's that's what you need. And I don't like Brandon Staley. I don't like the way he looks. I don't like the way he talks. He s- talks like a robot. He he has that smooth. The Raiders go in there. And by the way, Raider fans better take over that stadium big time. The Raiders go in there, and I hope they smash this team hard. And they beat them. They and, now I'm I'm expecting a close game, but I don't want a close game. I want the Raiders to go out there and beat them by 20 points. Just completely embarrass them on in LA, take over the stadium, leave with the victory and just smash them. Will that happen? Probably not. It looks like this will probably be a close game. It is an AFC West divisional matchup, so they're always usually close. But I would really like to see the Raiders go out there and smash this team. Because remember, the Raiders are underdogs in this game. No one thinks the Raiders are going to win this game. No. And that's what makes it so much better. But I also know that the last time they were in uh, SoFi Stadium playing the Chargers, there was a lot of interesting and strange occurrences, if you catch my drift. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I... A lot of strange things. A lot of strange things happened in that game. But, you know, it is what it is, you know. But we'll see. We will see what happens. But like I said, I um, I really think the Raiders need to go out there, play some smash mouth football, see if that opens up for the big pass. That's the way to do it, honestly. If you can, if you, and I really, honest and truthfully believe without having seen practice, without having seen what they got in the playbooks, just looking at the personnel that they've acquired, to me, it looks like they, they've set themselves up to do one, uh, one of a, one of a couple things primarily. And that's like you said earlier is, is to go power, is that you got the big, huge fullback, you got a, a an army of tight ends extra tackles that are huge guys and all of that the whole not the whole works a, a big committee backfield so that you can just keep pounding the football over and over and over again with fresh legs and a, and a big strong back or you can tell ter- you can turn around and spread everybody out and have nearly have arguably the best position players at every position 
So you got the best receiver at Devontae Adams. You got the best slot receiver at Hunter. You've got arguably a top three tight end in Darren Waller. So you've got your backfield committee and, and you've got you finally got the ultimate system for what I feel what I feel is the probably one of the best system quarterbacks in the league. So what, how do you think the Chargers are going to attack the Raiders? What, 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 are, you, what are you most worried about in this game? Uh, into the In between the hashes, about in the intermediate, probably about 5 to 15 yards and in between the hashes. I think that they're gonna, they run a lot of crossing routes. They run a, lot, they run a fair amount of picks. They, slide, they slip their back out of the backfield, have them you know, do the little route where you run uh, across the line of scrimmage two yards and turn around. Yeah, they also do a lot of illegal chop blocks. I I've noticed. Yeah, they got a lot. Of, they they also get away with quite a bit of holding as well. Oh yeah, I I mean, if you actually and I encourage uh, encourage anyone who listens to this to go back and uh, watch some Chargers games from last season, even against the Raiders, just watch it, and especially on running plays, you will see that the Chargers hold so much and they don't get flagged for nearly as much holding as they should be getting flagged for. I mean, they held a lot last season. So, you know, it was just something, something to watch out for in this game. Pause and cut. So what I really think is that the char- the Chargers are going to attack the Raiders in the middle of the field and, and just just about the linebacker area because honestly if if I was going to attack this defense that's where I would start if we until you until they proven that they fully address the the linebacking coverage area of the field and that they actually have guys that can do it against these tight ends and these slot receivers or e- or even the res- the running back coming out of the backfield then I'm going to continue to use that as, as my chain movers and it, eat this defense up until until they start giving up the big play because they're tired of being on the field so long. Uh, I would also I would also test that run defense. So there were there were a couple weeks where it looked stellar. There were a couple weeks where it looked bad. So which which is it? Uh, yeah. They, they started Andrew Billings and uh, in place of Jonathan Hankins. Now, is that going to be the way that it is on rushing downs? Who knows? But a- as of right now, that's all I have to go off of. So that's what we're working with. Yeah. And, you know, the Raiders had a tough time last year defending the middle of the field. If you remember, it was time and time and time again. Teams were just taking big chunks. And even, you know, eight yards here nine yards, 12 yards, right in the middle of the field. Hopefully that's something this Raiders defense and this new scheme will be able to stop. Um, but I fully expect the Chargers to test that out as well. Uh, just going after them, maybe with a tight end, um, some, you know, just testing the middle of the field against the Raiders defense. But 
Let's hope this defense is up for that task. Now, if you're the Raiders, I mean, we talked a little bit about this, but what, how are you going to attack the Chargers? On defense? On Well, first we'll do offense. How are you going to attack them on offense? Uh, with the, uh, running the football. Uh, I'm a, The best way to negate a speed rush is to run straight at them. And if you go double tight, I like the, the size of this offensive line. Now, they may not be the greatest at pass protection, but they are a huge bunch of guys. And if they and if you can get behind them and move them forward, then I really think that that will be the way that that uh, they can impose their will on the Chargers. Now, uh, you mentioned about the superior defensive line that the Chargers had, and I would think arguably probably their most underrated and best pickup was Sebastian Joseph Day and, and what he brings to them in terms of run support and, and being stout at the point of attack is something that that does worry me, especially since I believe he'll be lined up up against Lester Cotton Sr. Yes, he will be. And the Raiders, you know, I think they're a little bit shaky on Cotton right now. And listen, in, in the last preseason game that we've seen him play, he was a little bit shaky. So that's why I said earlier, I have a feeling the Chargers might do some stunts of their own, some linebacker blitzes and attack. Not, you know, everyone's expecting them to, you know, attack the right side, but they could attack right, right, you know, in the middle of that offensive line, you know, attack the guards, attack Cotton or whoever is, you know, playing Josh Simpson or, you know, just attacking those guys. And that's something the Raiders have to make sure doesn't happen because if the Raiders can establish a run game, I believe the Raiders can win this game. If they can establish a solid run game, it's going to open up to Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, Matt Collins, all of these guys, all of these weapons that everyone talks about. It's going to open that up. Now, if they can't, guess what? All those weapons don't mean shit. Nope. If there are cars on his back the entire game because he's getting just Pounded like his brother did in Houston, you know, 20 years ago, then oh, it's going to be a complete goodness. debacle. Oh, my it, goodness. Their car was not getting pounded like that. He was pressured on 21% of his throws, on 21% of 626 throws, to be exact. Ooh. David Carr? Derek, last season. Oh, Everybody. No, 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 no. Killing. I'm talking about David Carr. I said David Carr's uh, brother when he was in Houston. I remember the that, guy that, that was led, That was 76 times? Yeah, yeah. yeah 76 not, times? I was an NFL record. Nobody's come close to that. By the way, no one really knows how good David Carr could have been as a quarterback because he never got a chance. He never got a chance. He never got a chance, man. That poor guy. I mean, seriously, he literally never got a chance. Never got a chance. After that, he got shipped off to the Giants. He was a backup, obviously, that Peyton Manning. So, like, I mean, the, the guy yeah. didn't. Ne he never had a chance. Never. But yeah, I mean, no, I don't think the last year. I think the offensive line held up pretty good for Derek. I don't buy that whole thing or oh, he didn't have time he had plenty of time the Raiders made the playoffs okay if it was that bad the Raiders wouldn't have been in the playoffs simple as that but now they're going up against the Chargers they have good DTs like you mentioned they have good defensive ends they have good linebackers they are going to attack this offensive line there is no doubt about it but if the Raiders offensive line hopefully they go out there and Listen, everyone knows that everyone's talking about them as the weakest part of their team. Maybe they have a chip on their shoulder and say, no, nah, we're not going to get bullied around. And they hold it down because if they can hold it down and create some lanes for these Josh Jacobs and all these running backs the Raiders have, it will open up the passing game. And if that happens, I am here to tell you all of Raider Nation, that the Raiders will kick the living shit out of the Chargers if this offensive line is giving Derek Carr a lot of time 
I, I mean, you're not going to be able to stop it. Darren Waller, Dante, uh, Devontae Adams, and Hunter Renfro, and throw in Mac Collins with his speed. You can throw in Tyron John Johnson. I mean, you can. You won't be able to stop it. You really won't. Now, my only question is, will this game, Phil, be a shootout like the other games were against the Chargers? You, I think that I and what I to be uh, completely transparent. I think that's the uh, that's why they built this team the way that they did. So they built it in a way to control tempo, which was the power and the run. And if that doesn't work, then to spread it out and win a shootout because they didn't fool because they didn't fully know what they had on defense and where what what they were going to get out of it. But they just knew that points that they needed to increase the point output significantly. Well, the the one thing I do know for a fact, this coaching staff and this whole new regime wanted to change. And this is going to be this is my biggest point of the game. What the Raiders need to do in order to win this game is getting touchdowns when they're in the red zone. Last year, unacceptable. Too many times did we see DC clutch go out there and kick field goals when this team could have got seven or six or, or, or it would have been seven you know a touchdown instead of a field goal red zone opportunities when the raiders are in the red zone in this game they have to take advantage of that they cannot be kicking field goals why the chargers are scoring touchdowns or we're going to be in big trouble and that's one big part of what josh mcdaniels and this offense been working on all training camp. I mean, I don't know. It's pretty much been the the number one focal point. What they've been doing at practices is a lot of red zone type stuff and two minute drill type things. So we'll see. Is this team going to be better in the red zone? If they are, the Raiders will be a dangerous team this season. Yes, they will. They they appear to be well dis much better disciplined, and what what I find interesting, and this is the part that nobody talks about, when Alex Leatherwood left, think about how many penalties, how many scoring plays, how many how many boneheaded mental mistakes, and, and I'm not and I'm not calling them a bonehead. I'm just saying that those the mistakes that were made were mental mistakes, but. All of that, all of that, that was sucking you down in the red zone, because a lot of that happened in yeah. in, in red zone. You you uh, remove you got that off the team. Yeah, off the team, and then another, my other one I mean, to transition right into it is going to be penalties. The Raiders can't shoot themselves in the foot with penalties. Alex Leatherwood is gone. Let the Chargers do that to themselves. They're good at doing that. Let them do that. You know what I mean? Let them commit the penalties. If the Raiders could just clean that up. Hell, if the Raiders could clean up the penalties last season, who knows where the Raiders would have went? Seriously. I mean, the Raiders might, I, I know this might sound crazy to some people, but if the Raiders last season didn't commit so many penalties, this team last year, remember, they took the Bengals down to the wire. The Bengals end up going to the Super Bowl. This team, maybe, who knows, could have been in the Super Bowl if you took away all those stupid penalties. I mean, all that dumb shit the Raiders did. I mean, it was mind-boggling. So they got to in that right there. They got to play a clean, physical game. And they got to be smart. And they got to be ready. And then on the other side of the ball, when the Chargers are in the red zone, you want to limit them to three. You want to keep the Chargers out of the end zone. And my biggest thing is you have to make sure you don't get beat over the top by the Chargers with Justin Herbert and all his uh, wide receivers he has. You, you, you can't get beat over the top. You know they're going to go for some big plays, you know, some big go routes here and there. The Raiders got to be ready for it. They got to be ready for that because it's going to happen. They're going to test Keelan Allen and all these guys they got, you know, Mike Williams, who, whoever you want to point to. They are going to test that Raiders secondary. They're going to throw it deep 
The Raiders got to be ready. Nate Hobbs got to be ready. Rocky sen has got to be ready. The safeties got to be ready. They all got to be ready. And hopefully, hopefully the Raiders defense line, they don't let Justin Herbert have that time to throw those big bombs. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, I really am looking forward to see this and to see where this team measures up to see. I, I look it. I thought as we were talking about the line, I, I couldn't help but think. So if you, if the way that this line ended up being split was that it had, it had great stats in, in terms of what they did. And then it had two of the worst performing linemen for their positions uh, on the right side. And when, and when you look at it, both of those guys are, are ha- aren't, going to be starting for the team this year yeah there's exactly no, there's no parker there's no there's no leatherwood and so exactly. if you go with popular group think then by by subtraction they just added all right so uh so let let's let's get down to it then what is your prediction for this game phil what's your final prediction uh i think it's going to be more along the lines of a shootout and I think that I think it's probably going to end up being 35 to 30 for the Raiders. So you are taking the Las Vegas Raiders all day, every one. day. OK, well, I will do my pick. Now, the Raiders are a three and a half point underdog. This is week one. They are playing against the Chargers who, you know, they should have just tied last season. They're going to come into this game really pissed off. Can the Raiders match that intensity? I think they do. I think they're really, I think they're, if they are, you know, buying what Josh McDaniels is selling and these guys, from what I know, from talking just to two or three players, they can't wait to play. Like they want to play a football game. So I think the Raiders are going to go out there and everyone's talking about a close game. And yeah, it seems like it's going to be a close game, but I think the Raiders are going to win. And I think they're going to win by a touchdown or more. Hey, and, I, and I'm just going to say this in, in fair warning and, and advance notification. Just don't, don't let them go out there and roll the charges in week one. Uh, you might not be, you might not be able to calm me down when we do the recap show. Yeah, I, I yeah, you you uh, might not you might not be able to calm me down. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I mean, the, like I said, this game is going to set the tone for the Raiders' season, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, if if they if they lost, I'm not saying the season's over by any means, but if they win, no, I think it's just such a blow they asses out. Fuck, just winning. I want to see them blow dog them, blow well, they yeah, asses obviously. out. Obviously, that's the goal here, but I'm just saying if they lose, it's not the end of the world. No, it's but not. If they, but if they win, then look out, man. Look out for the Las Vegas Raiders this season because that means they bought in. They beat the Chargers, who, ev- I mean, that's the national media's darling team right now to win that division. Them in Denver. I don't know why Denver so much, but. Either way, by the way, they get to play Geno Smith week one, but the Raiders have to play Justin Herbert. By the way, another real quick thing before we end this show, Justin Herbert, you also got to be careful of him running the football. That's another thing the Raiders got to really lock down on. Don't let this guy pick up first downs with his legs all the time when when plays break down. He's really good at doing that. They got to be aware of him at all times. You know, like – And like I said, this game will come down to turnovers and penalties. If the Raiders can create some turnovers and score when they get in the red zone, I believe the Raiders will win, and they will win by a touchdown. There it is. All right. So real quick, Phil, uh, I'm just going to go over some games real quick, okay? This is only going to be two seconds, and then we're going to end our show here. Uh, Bills and Rams, okay? Okay. Bills two and a half point uh, under uh, favorite. Who, who do you got in that game? Who are you taking, taking? the Bills? Bills I am by two. Three. Okay, so I am two. So we're both in agreement with that game. Ravens at the Jets. 
The Ravens are a seven point favorite. Ravens. Who are you taking? Ravens. Me too. Actually, Me too. actually, you know what? I'm still taking the Ravens. Me too. I'm 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 taking them. I, I'm hoping to find a game we disagree on. That way, next week we we'll, you know we can compare. You know who won? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Colts at the Texans. Colts are favored by seven. I think the Colts cover. I'm gonna say the Houston Texans shock the world. I'll take the, I'll take the Texans getting seven at home. Okay, all right, all right. There's one. There's one. Uh, Eagles at Lions. Eagles are a four point favorite. I will take the Eagles. Fly I have to because Eagles my family will kill me. Wait, did you take an Eagles? You're taking the Eagles. All right, 49ers at Chicago. 49ers are are favored by seven. I couldn't believe it was only seven. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm taking the forty. Yeah, I'm taking the Forty Niners too. You just muted yourself there, big time. But yeah, I, I'm taking I'm taking Forty uh, Niners. Yeah, uh, Steelers, <laughs> Bengals. Ooh, now here's an intriguing one. What's the line? Steelers are at home or on the road? Uh, they are. Um, it's it's in Cincinnati. They're uh, they're on the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Steelers yeah. What's, the okay. What's the line? S- six and a half. Yeah, uh, I'll take I'll take the Bengals. Yeah, me too. Saints Falcons five and a half. Uh, Saints, our favorite. Uh, I'll take the I'll take the Falcons. All right, and I'm 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 gonna take the Falcons as well. All right, those are the only ones we'll do because uh, we're running out of time here. But anyways, everyone, thanks for listening. My name is Stephen Michaels. That's Phil Robinson. This is the Raiders Weekly. We will see you next week for the post-game show. Who will win? Will the Raiders be 1-0 or will they be 0-1? Find out next week right here on Silver and Black Media on the Raiders Weekly.